It's not just women who shop on the platform. And I actually currently don't. I don't. I'm going to stop that. They don't know what they're talking about. I'm not being funny. They were larking around at the beginning. Uh, I, I guess it's the market cap. I mean, you get you get these presenters on TV and like, like, what the hell? I'm not even going to continue with that. That was a, a rubbish um, presentation. Those two didn't have a clue what they were talking about. They're reading off scripts, teleprompts. Um, so I'm I'm not going to even bother with that. I think that's absolutely rubbish. Time for another stock review. This time, PDD Holdings. And this is going to surprise you, this one, when I started to look at it and research it and prepare for this review. I was like, really? Really? Uh, the first thing I need to say, of course, is it's an ADR. What does ADR mean? Let me share with you what are ADRs. American Depository uh, uh, Receipts, ADRs, represent shares of non-US based companies. Banks issue ADRs to facilitate trading on, U on, on US exchanges. Some banks require investors to pay periodic service fees, typically 0.01 to 0.03 per share. Very, very small, but we just need to alert you there are extra costs into buying uh, companies outside of the US. Just so you know, I've got a few, shouldn't put you off, but you just need to be made aware of it. Okay, you're now going to get a full review uh, on this review. We are going to look at uh, the balance sheet, the numbers, who's buying, who's selling. We're going to compare it to uh, the S&P 500. We're going to give it a profitability score, solvency score, see the inside trading, news around the stock. Uh, we're also going to look at uh, some, some recent news as well, um, the sentiment. We're also going to look at the website. I'm going to save the best bit for last. Uh, <laughs> that's probably, well, I'm not going to say anything, but you want to, you want to see the website. It's all I want to say. Uh, we're going to compare it to the SNP. Is it a good, uh, is it a good stock? And of course I always, as always reach out to the CEO. My, um, my reviews accompany meet the CEO series where I interview CEOs from the uh, New York stock exchange and have them on my show their company, these videos. So I shall send an invitation and uh, I shall put all the uh, the playlists for the uh, uh, Meet the CEO playlist at the end of, as well. You can ask me to do a full review of a stock. It's using the most uh, up-to-date, most advanced algorithmic software. It's unbiased. It's real. No one sponsors me, pays me to say these things. I just look at it as if I was investing in it. Well, basically, I am, right? And uh, if I want to buy it or not, and uh, I'm just looking at balance sheets, numbers, facts, information, building relationships or on the ground with the companies and coming to the conclusion, is it right for me to buy this stock? Right. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. What is PDD? Well, let's start off and uh, we look at the overall chart here going back from uh, 2018 to where we are now. You can see it's, uh, it was around at 26 all the way up to 165, back down again and straight back up again. So what is it? Okay, PDD Holdings uh, is a multinational commerce group that owns and operates a portfolio of businesses. The company aims to bring more businesses and people into the digital economy so that local communities and small businesses can benefit from increased productivity. It's just a bit like um, Palantir coming in and restructuring your business and making it more efficient and AI, I don't know. Anyway, from increased productivity and new opportunities, it has built uh, a network of sourcing logistics and fulfillment capabilities that support its underlying business. The company was founded by Hu Lin Chai and Zheng uh, Huang in 2015, I hope I pronounced that correctly, and headquartered in Dublin, Ireland. I've got family in Ireland, so I'll have them go around and have a look on the door. The listed name is PDD, is PDD Holdings, is an American depository share uh, company. Right, let's have a look. Um, so then, um, 12,992 employees, CEO is Lee Chin, um, it is 40% if you are buying with margin. So it's mid-risk, gives you an idea that it's mid-risk. Um, 
So uh, just gives you a sentiment of the, of the volatility of the stock. The market cap, not the value of the company, just the value of the shares outstanding, what people are prepared to pay, $194 billion. So it's a decent-sized company, right? It's bigger than me. I like it. $194 billion. High today, $147. 52-week high, $147. So we're pretty much at a 52-week high at the moment. We don't like to buy at a 52-week high unless there's any extra stimulus to the stock that we don't yet know about anyway. Um, price earnings ratio, 32 times, sorry, 32.79 price to earnings ratio. So it trades expensive, potentially, you need to compare it. I don't know who to compare it to yet. Um, the price earnings could be expensive. It's a growth stock. It may have a stock, a price that can grow into its value. Um, certain stocks like Tesla, you will pay more for because everyone's buying it and it's going to grow into the stock. I don't know. Uh, we'll need to look at that shortly. 52-week low, $59. So there's a lot of volatility here. Uh, no dividends, fully a growth stock. 9 million is the average volume. No volume at all today, which is a concern on a really, really, really bullish day. If uh, if uh, this business was of any consequence and anybody wanted to buy anything, today is the day because we can identify today and put a little check mark next to the businesses who haven't moved today. We've seen quite a few dead companies not move today. And that tells you there's something wrong because they've not moved because the, the whole world has gone extremely bullish and everything's being bought. That doesn't mean to say, they're doing the right thing or the wrong thing. But if nothing's moving on a day like today, it's never going to move, right? I'm just saying. It's important to know that. Um, okay. Um, the analysts from Morningstar, who I don't uh, re re regard as the best in the world, they say it's 94% buy out of 47 ratings, strong buy from them. No, uh, it's a hold, no sell. Let's have a look what the bulls and the bears say. The bulls say PDT, PDD could be able to penetrate the high price categories and less sensitive consumer uh, consumers better than expected. The bears, on the other hand, say users will go to Alibaba and JD but not PDD for high price and unbranded merchandise, except for that uh, that are subsidized by PDD. Success is that is the categories could be worse uh, in these categories could be worse. OK, um, that's a, a, a just a basic case from the bears and the bulls. All right. Let's move down and look at the earnings. First of all, the stewardship is standard. The uncertainty is very high. Don't be put off by that. That's quite normal. Economic moat, narrow, okay? Gives us an idea of the margins then. Uh, the, the company is making money. As you can see, it looks like it's moving up. It looks like it's it's beating consistently the, uh, the, 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 the Wall Street analysts as well. The, um, the dark is the Wall Street analyst. The light green is the uh, actual results. And it is comfortably beating the Wall Street analysts. So that's good. Um, who are we in bed with? Who else is uh, buying this company? Well, JD, uh, Alibaba. Um, you know what I think of Alibaba. It's not for me. I did a review on it recently. Um, uh, uh, Ten cents buy do. I have to say I'm not familiar with all these. I'm not familiar with all these companies. But there's some Chinese companies here. I don't buy Chinese companies. I just don't like the manipulation of the way the Chinese government work. It's just not for me. Um, but anyway, there's nothing terrible in that list. There's no Mullen or anything like that, or or Tilray or anything like that with aggressive or Lucid aggressive stock trading. Um, but there is some volatility here. And as the bears say, they could go to JD and Alibaba for these services. And uh, so who knows? Anyway, this is the first time I've looked at it. Let's uh, let's go and look at, uh, before we go into the numbers, which is the most important that comes toward the end of my review, the most important, uh, we're going to look now at the website. And if you type in pddholdings.com, are you ready for the shock of the century? I think this is really bad. Whoever's managing the company has dropped the ball big time. And I look for excellence. If there's anything about anything I don't like, there's plenty that I do. I just move on. Next, next, next. Let me look at this. So 
when I type this in, pddholdings.com, this is the website. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. Yep. A billion dollar company looks like that. I was like, that can't be right. But it is. It is absolutely right. I am flabbergasted that they think that is acceptable from a company of this size. PDD Holdings is a multinational commerce group that owns and operates a portfolio of businesses. PDD Holdings aims to bring more businesses and people into the digital economy so that local communities and small businesses can benefit from the increased productivity and new appointments. PDD Holdings has built a network of sourcing, logistics and fulfillment capabilities that support its underlying businesses. Now remember, when you are buying a business, you are buying the management, the CEO, the company, what they do. Do you trust them? Do you like them? It doesn't really matter if you like them, but do you respect them? I have to say that is terrible. PDD Holdings, that's your website, your homepage, your front page. Look at that. I mean, I made it on the phone in three minutes. I mean, you've got to judge it for what it is. If you click on the button, investors, this is what it takes you to. Uh, that. Um, I, I really don't know what to say about that. I mean, pretty... Well, let's be honest. Let's use the word. It's pretty crap, isn't it? It's probably the worst website I've ever seen. If I'm if I'm honest, and I am, and there we are. Uh, I mean, it has to be the worst website I've ever seen in the history of the world. I mean, what can I say? Um News releases. Let's have a look at the latest news, November 28. Uh, we will look at their financial results in detail in a moment. But anyway, there it is. That's how the company like to present themselves. What can I say? Um, there is another part of it. Uh, this is Pin Pinudu uh, Duo. Um, it's a bit confusing. This is the same company, though. This is the same company, all part of. Now, straight away, as I often say, if there's confusion for the investor... If there's confusion for the customer, I don't want any part of it. So this looks very confusing to me. I don't like, I don't, I think this, I mean, agriculture, our principles, our values. Um, I mean, I'm going to look at the numbers in a minute, but I don't know if anybody else feels the same. Are we confused by what this business actually is? Uh, our company, play the video. All right, I'll play the video. I'll make sure I'm muted. Uh, mute the site. Let's play the video just a moment. Um, it's not a conventional company. It's a mobile in nature and caters for, you got that right, it's not conventional, and needs the use of a smartphone. The pin format and pioneered means of share, explore and purchase together. Not only values, most people value products of our platform, Okay, I'm reading all the reading all the information. It's obviously in Chinese. Um, while uh, conventional e-commerce platforms rely on search-based infantry index models, Pindudu's platform is based on resembling a virtual bazaar. Okay. All right. Enough of that. Um, our our company. Wow. Okay. Founded in 2015. Let's try and get to the bottom of this. Um, PDD Holdings, uh, Pin Duo Duo, started as a fresh agriculture platform before expanding to a leading social commerce player serving approximately 900 million users. True. Uh, it's uh, it, true to its slogan, together, more savings, more fun. Pin Duo Duo brings fun into con consumers' shopping journey. As a company rooted in agriculture, why am I getting these last couple of days? Some very odd companies. Pin Duo uh, Duo um, has worked with more than 16 million farmers and their community to take part in and, and benefit from the fast growing digital economy. What is PD uh, Holdings? PDD Holdings is a multinational commerce group that owns and operates a portfolio of businesses. PDD Holdings aims to be... Okay, we've all read that before. Um, 
Okay, this is a very confusing. Anyway, that being said, let's look at some news. Wall Street continue to celebrate strong quarterly results from the Chinese online retailer. Shares of PDD Holdings climbed 4% to a fresh 52-week high on Thursday following several bullish an analysis notes regarding the parent company of Chinese online retailer Pindu Duo. Uh, Pin Duo Duo. Okay, that's the parent company. So now we're kind of getting an idea of, okay, PDD enjoyed price target upgrades from several analysis firms between yesterday after market close and early this morning. JP Morgan raised its target to 180 from 120. Bernstein raised it from 170, but they would do. They all Those sort of uh, companies always do. Banks always do. I don't um, trust that. Um, let's have a little look. Wall Street is celebrating PDD's latest quarter. The timing of the upgrade is no coincidence. Shares also rallied yesterday. As several other analysts upgraded their perspectives, respective ratings on PDD stock after the company's third quarter 2023 uh, results absolutely crushed expectations. PDD's quarterly revenue soared 94% year over year to 68.8 billion uh, yuan or roughly $9.4 billion, while net income climbed. Anyway, I will read those figures myself using our, our software. What's next for the shareholders? Wall Street an analysts aren't the only ones rate praising PDD for its relative strength. According to a subsequent report from Bloomberg, Alibaba Group co-founder Jack Ma issued an internal memo calling for his company to correct its course as other Chinese rivals gain momentum. Ma even signaled out PDD, praising decisions taken by the company in recent years that have fueled its growth. Alibaba, for its part, has struggled to drive revenue growth. Yes, I said I wouldn't buy Alibaba at all. Um, okay, we're getting an idea of what it is. In my mind, though, from an investment point of view, it's still not a proprietary direct focus. It's not an Apple. It's not a Tesla. It's not a Virgin Galactic. It's not a Google. Um, it's not an Amazon. Um, it's not a company that I can just see where it's going and understand its business structure. It seems a bit complicated to me, and I don't like Chinese manipulated stocks anyway. So I, I'm not buying this regardless. I don't fully understand it, even though I'm reading it. So there it is. Uh, you know, it, it is what it is. Let me go over to the numbers now, and uh, let's look at the numbers, uh, and we can decide whether this is, it's a good company or not based upon facts, not just confusion, which is what you often get with this type of stock. I'm sorry, but that's what that's the way it is. Um, let's have a look. So, best case scenario. Now, Wall Street have just said, everything's great, it's great, massive growth, blah, 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 blah. But our numbers, excuse me, our numbers using basic numbers, facts, most advanced algorithmic software, no influence, no siding up on one side, no one paying me to review, none of that, just numbers. Best case scenario, it's overvalued by 55%. We're not in a best case scenario, we're in, we're in a base case. Base case, 1% overvaluation. Now then, I'm prepared to spend up to 25% overvaluation for a high growth stock like Tesla, for example, because everybody buys it, it's expensive, it can grow and continue. Overvaluation is 1%. So it's in that realm if you think if you think it's um, going to grow, but I like to buy undervalued stocks, not, not overvalued stocks, no matter how much they are, unless I understand the business like Tesla, for example. Overvaluation, 45% if we value at $80. Okay, all right. So that gives an idea about the intrinsic value, but there's not, there's not enough there. There's no warnings. Everything seems fine. Historic profit, 481. I'm looking at a company like this. What One, it's not for me. I'm just telling you right off the bat. It's too confusing. Don't know what it is. I wouldn't buy it anyway. Um, but... Um, I would like to look at the margins, how it compares to Alibaba and JD and Amazon, perhaps. Anyway, let's scroll down. Let's pick this up. This is our interpretation of what was said from the facts that were said. So we can put it, not it's not manipulated, it's exactly as it was said. Q3, revenue soared 68.8 billion. 
a 94% increase year on year. Sounds great. However, you get an S-curve, it could flatten off. We don't know that yet. With, sus with substantial with substantial gains in both online marketing services, up 39% to RMB, 39.7 billion. Transaction services up 315%. Costs rose significantly due to enhanced services, leading to a 263 spike in total cost of revenue. Operating expenses grew more modestly, uh, modestly at 44%, reflecting strategic investment under the firm's development strategy. None gap uh, R&D research and development spending hit a record uh, 2.8 billion gap. Net income uh, reached um, 15.5 billion. Okay. Um, all right. Cash flow strong. All right. Let's look at the balance sheet. So we're talking about lots of growth here, but again, no matter how big the growth is, you understand, you've got to understand what you're buying and I'm not fully sure what I'm buying. Uh, up 20% on the most recent range, analysts are predict predicting uh, huge growth, S-curve type growth. However, the, the intrinsic value didn't dictate that. That's what they're anticipating. Um, and again, this kind of stock is heavily manipulated, so I don't know about this. Uh, yet anyway, operating income up 16%, net, net income up 12%. So all of this stuff looks good. Um, and, uh, you know, let's move down operating cash flow, 83.8 billion, uh, point, uh, up 33% capital expenditure. No much, not much information there. Um, yeah, that's a long time ago. Some information there missing. That's not good. Uh, that's not our software. It's just not available. Uh, 83.8 up at 33% free cash flow. Okay. Let's have a look at the balance sheet. The balance sheet is 314 billion in assets, 152 in liabilities. Um, got, we got, hang on, we got 203 cash and short term investments. So we're holding a lot of cash in this business. Okay. Liabilities, long-term debt. They haven't got any real debt to, to, to think about. 1.6 billion. 1.6 billion, 314 in assets, 203 billion. They're well, very well financed. They've got plenty of money wherever this money came from. They've got plenty of money. Um, debts is irrelevant. So their solvency score is going to be fantastic. Their solvency score is going to be fantastic. Now then, um, I'll jump straight to that. There you go. 64%. I actually thought it would, would have been higher than that. Um, there's obviously something bringing it down. It's interesting. I would have thought it'd be higher than that. Their profitability is 82%, which is phenomenal. Their margins, 67%. Now, in a minute, we'll compare that to JD, Alibaba, and Amazon, perhaps. 67% margins. They are coming down. They were 75, have come down. So they're selling, it looks to me, this is unbranded goods. So they're selling what I call cheap junk. Um, you make a lot of money on cheap junk. I'm, I'm being, I'm, I, I, that's probably unfair. I don't know. But when I've seen this kind of uh, like Alibaba and stuff like that, you see a lot of cheap junk. Um, but anyway, they've got a lot of profit when you sell unbranded names. I wouldn't buy it. That's not for me anyway, but anyway. Um, good margins, good profitability, obviously, making a lot of money. Um, and I thought, and I would have thought their solvency would have been better than that. That's interesting that it's uh, it's still very good. It's not a concern at all. They're not going bust. Um, but what what is odd is the Wall Street don't give massive amounts of potential. 13% upside, 14% downside. 30. There's nothing there to get excited about. Um, so let's look at Alibaba. Let, Alibaba. Um, let's, just, um, let's just have a look at what um, the... Margins are again, 67%, 67%. Let's compare that to Alibaba just for a moment. 67% margins, 38% margins. See, their margins is really phenomenal. 
So that's very, a very, very good sign. Smashes um, Alibaba. But, we, you know, I wouldn't buy Alibaba anyway. Let's go to JD. JD.com. 14% margins. See, their margins are, are, are huge. They're cr crushing. Uh, the, you know, the, they said earlier on that um, but perhaps, um, perhaps, uh, you know, uh, they could be in trouble by JD and Alibaba, but I don't see that at all. Their, their margins are really, really, really good. Um, we don't see, uh, do we see um, Amazon in this? Do they put it as a competition? They don't even... Uh, they don't even mention Amazon as a competition to this kind of stock. It's very different. So no, it's not even regarded as a competition. No, so we, so we shouldn't uh, do it that way either. But anyway, their margins are very good. Their cash balance is good. Their debt position is very good. Um, the value seems a bit off. I don't really know what they do. Um, short interest is 4% which is we've been here before, not excessive. There is some short interest. There would be at this price and people think he's going to come down, but no short squeeze around the, on the cards. Let's have a quick listen. This was just three days ago. Uh, let's listen into this review here. China's most valuable. I can't have the music, so I've got to just mute that. I actually owned that title mm -hmm. for nearly a decade. That title now goes to Pinduoduo, or PDD. That is a parent company to the shopping app Timu. The company has been around for less than a decade, but is making big waves in the e-commerce space, surpassing not only Alibaba, but its other Chinese counterparts. Just in the past year, U.S. spending on Timu has already surpassed Shine. Shein. It, it's Shein? Sorry. Yeah, I know, it's a woman thing. <laughs> I, thought it was, I thought it was Shine or Shein, but hey. <laughs> I'll go either way. And yeah. Timu is attracting more monthly customers as well, increasing its lead over Shein. Shein, Shein? yes. Shein every month. I'll get it by the end of this segment. I know. But can Pin Duo Deal keep the momentum going? Um, I want to go to... Go ahead. I want to go to the Wi-Fi Interactive. <laughs> yes. I just want to show, this is our Chinese heat map. Stop messing around. And this around. shows Pin Duo Deal with a $188 billion um, I guess market capitalization here, mm -hmm. trumping Alibaba by about seven, six, seven billion dollars, yeah. and nothing else is really even close. Yeah, I mean, Penduo Dual parent company or PDD parent company of Timo has seen its stock surge this year. I mean, it has just, it's come after Shein's market. Uh, and just continued to outstrip it month after month after month. I mean, when you look at it, it first beat out Shein back in May. Uh, and, you know, it, it's not just women who shop on the platform. And I actually currently don't. I don't. I'm going to stop that. They don't know what they're talking about. I'm not being funny. They were larking around at the beginning. Uh, I, I guess it's the market cap. I mean, you get you get these presenters on TV and like, like what the hell? I'm not even going to continue with that. That was a, a rubbish um, presentation. Those two didn't have a clue what they were talking about. They're reading off scripts, teleprompts. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to even bother with that. I think that's absolutely rubbish. Um, let's have a look here at the, uh, the last 90 days. You get a lot, a lot of that on Yahoo Finance. It's like they're just making stuff up. 90 days. Um, we've got 64% positive news. Over the last 30 days, we've moved now into 68% positive news. Uh, seven days, uh, it's gone back to 61. And today, uh, it's 50-50, not much. So, um, we have to, obviously, if we're going to invest in a company, we have to look at the comparison to the S&P. We have to do that. Um, for me, this is... I'll give you my final analysis in, in, in a moment, but uh, let's go and look at the S&P. We've got to look at that. Um, the S&P, $10,000, you'd be up to 19000 PDD, 10000 Since 2019, you've six x See, now this to me is too strong a growth. It's for gamblers out there and people who just don't care, make money. I'm, I'm, I'm a value investor looking for companies to buy and own, own for life, not sell, live on dividends. I'm looking for great value. I'll scalp if necessary, but I'm not playing the gambling game. It looks to me, uh, you can see the volatility up one minute, down the next minute. Um, and that was after, it, it seemed to, it seemed to, uh, it seemed to it seemed to accelerate through COVID, uh, and then fall off, and then go up again. Um, 
to me, that looks like manipulation. That me, that sh- to me, that looks like macro conditions have driven the stock. Thereby, you're betting on future ma- macro conditions to, to for it to occur again. So let me um, let me give my final thoughts on this. Just as we come up to the bell, I don't like Chinese stocks. I think the whole thing is manipulated beyond belief. Every business is is Wall Street is terrible. We all know. However, Chinese go to a whole new level of corruption and nonsense. Um, the way that stock. It, first of all, the company is very confusing what it is. We've looked at it. We've read the web. The, the, web, the website has been made by a five-year-old child. It's rubbish. Um, it doesn't really seem to make sense. There's no integration. You know, you look at Apple, you look at Amazon, you, can, you understand the business in 10 seconds. As an investor, a consumer, you feel confident it's being, you know, the IT department is doing a good, good job. The IT department of PDD is doing a rubbish job. It's the worst website I've ever seen in my life. Um, the, the, uh, the balance sheet doesn't really make that much sense. They've got some debt, but their profitability doesn't seem... Their solvency seems better than their balance sheet would suggest, or not as good as their balance sheet would suggest. Their uh, their profitability seems way too high for what they're doing. In other words, uh, we're selling unbranded goods, really cheap rubbish. I don't know. Um, it seems to me not the sort of quality stock that I want to buy. Uh, and on a day like today, when my stocks are up 20, 30%, my portfolio is up, uh, we've had one of the bullish days we've had in two and a half years. The stock went straight up, straight back down again. Everything about this stock is wrong. The website is awful. The information looks bad. It's not one for me. I have to say, there's my there's my thoughts on it. Something smells wrong here. I don't like it. The profits are way too high. The volatility is is back on the back of macro conditions. I don't like it. Click above my head for more information. Click down below in the description. It's not a buy from me. It's a, it's a well clear stock from me. Still still well clear. Over here, you'll put uh, you will see all my reviews now of the Wall Street. Um, uh, Wall Street CEOs. I'm doing this whole series of Meet the CEO and my uh, reviews will all be up here. And in a couple of days time, it'll be on the website above Yahoo Finance and CNBC because that was an awful conversation they were having. They didn't have a clue what they were talking about. Anyway, there's my opinion on uh, PDD, whatever it is. Penduo, Duo, sister ships, mother ships, um, parent companies, profit a lot all over the place. Don't like it. A website made by a five-year-old, definitely not one for me. There you go. Until next time, as always, take care of yourselves and each other.